Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Shawls. Today we have our first North American folktale of the week. And this tale comes to us from Charles Skinner in his Myths and Legends of Our Own Land. And while the story has a truly happy ending at the very end, there is a bit of a curve in there, and not everything is quite as rosy as it ends up. This is The Division of the Saranacs. In the middle of the last century, a large body of Saranac Indians occupied the forests of the Upper Saranac, through which ran the Indian carrying place, called by them the Eagle Nest Trail. Whenever they raided the Tawahi on the slopes of Mount Tawahis, Sky Splitter, there was a pleasing rivalry between two young athletes, called the Wolf and the Eagle, as to which would carry off more scalps, and the tribe was divided in admiration of them. There was one who did not share this liking, an old sachem, one of the wizards who had escaped when the great spirit locked these workers of evil in the hollow trees that stood beside the trail. In their struggles to escape, the less fortunate ones thrust their arms through the closing bark, and they are seen there as withered trunks and branches to this day. Okwara had not been softened by this exhibition of danger, nor the qualification of mercy that allowed him still to exist. Rather, he was more bitter when he saw, as he fancied, that the tribe thought more of the daring and powerful warriors than it did of the bent and malignant-minded counselor. It was the noon of green leaves that the two young men set off to hunt the moose, and on the next day the wolf returned alone. He explained that in the hunt they had been separated. He had called for hours for his friend, and had searched so long that he concluded he must have returned ahead of him. But he was not at the camp. Up rose the sachem with visage dark. I hear a forked tongue, he cried. The wolf was jealous of the eagle, and his teeth have cut into his heart. The wolf cannot lie, answered the young man. Where is the eagle? angrily shouted the sachem, clutching his hatchet. The wolf has said, replied the other. The old sachem advanced upon him, but as he raised his axe to strike, the wife of the wolf threw herself before her husband, and the steel sank into her brain. The sachem fell an instant later with the wolf's knife in his heart, and instantly the camp was in turmoil. Before the day had passed, it had been broken up, and the people were divided into factions, for it was no longer possible to hold it together in peace. The wolf, with half of the people, went down the sounding river to new hunting grounds, and the earth that separated the families was reddened whenever one side met the other. Years had passed when, one morning, the upper tribe saw a canoe advancing across the lake of the silver sky. An old man stepped from it. He was the eagle. After the wolf had left him, he had fallen into a cleft in a rock and had lain helpless until found by hunters who were on their way to Canada. He had joined the British against the French. He had married a northern squaw, but had returned to die among the people of his early love. Deep was his sorrow that his friend should have been accused of doing him an injury, and that the once happy tribe should have been divided by that allegation. The warriors and sachems of both branches were summoned to a council, and in his presence they swore a peace, so that in the fullness of time he was able to die content. And that peace 
was always kept. And that is the division of the Saranax, a North American folktale captured again for us by Charles Skinner. And while the ending is happy, there is an awful lot of sadness here. But, at least in this tale, joy and happiness reigns in the end. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget that you can also help support the podcast. You head over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject where for as little as a dollar a month, you can get early access to every story that's told. As always, thank you so much for listening.